So a lot of you have been asking for me to explain more about the NASDAQ All-Stars, which is the trading system that I use. So in this video, that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna explain how the NASDAQ All-Stars uses momentum and why it works. I'm gonna show you why it's been able to get an average return of over 30% each year, which has allowed it to do three times better than the NASDAQ itself since 2007. And even better is the risk management on this system, because the worst drawdown we've had is less than half of the total market, and that becomes real nice in scenarios like 2008, where you're facing a market crash. Now the NASDAQ All-Stars is a system I always talk about because it's the one that I personally use with my own money. And it's the one that I show to the fallible community. The guys who are signed up for the All-Stars get email alerts, they get to see my portfolio, they get text messages whenever we make position changes, all that good stuff. So I'll explain some of that in this video. And if you're interested in learning more about the NASDAQ All-Stars, then click the link in this video. I'll put it above right here and below in the comments. Click one of those links and you'll go to a page where you could put in your email and I'll just directly send you more information about this thing. This video will be an overview. So if you want more details, definitely go put your email into that page. But okay, to start off, I wanna tell you how I even got to the NASDAQ All-Star system. So from the time I've been trading, I've always been interested in growth stocks. I love looking for stuff like the next Amazon. You know, it's fun for me. I like tech and, you know, matches my personality. But the way I used to do that is through a lot of fundamental, technical, and sentiment analysis, which was pretty time consuming. I hours and hours each day. And it was it was fun, but it was a lot of hard work. And the results were okay. But as I kept executing my strategy, I kept learning more and more about growth stocks and what I was actually trying to do. And what I finally realized, because I got down to the first principles of what I was trying to do, was that I was trying to identify momentum. And all I wanted to do was put my money in the highest momentum stocks. So you can do that through the analysis I was doing, you know, fundamental and technical. But I realized it's not the most efficient way because the most efficient way to do it is just through math. I realized all I should be doing is looking at the chart of a stock and performing a regression analysis on it. That's an easy way to see whether it has momentum or not. And that realization is what finally brought me to the NASDAQ All-Star system. So what the NASDAQ All-Stars does is that it takes the NASDAQ 100 and then ranks them based off their momentum. And it does this with the TSI, which is the trend strength indicator. It analyzes the stock and the higher the TSI number, the more momentum the stock has. Now, the way we calculate that TSI number is proprietary, but any momentum system is basically just doing a regression analysis like what I just talked about. Now, there are tweaks and differences, like some people might have a 30-day look-back period and others might have a 60-day, but the concept is the same. You're trying to identify momentum. So once we have this list of stocks of the highest momentum, all we're doing is rotating into the top five highest momentum stocks each month. So the main idea is to put our money into the stocks that are moving and to take our money out of the ones that are slowing down. That way you're always with the winners. So that's the main idea of the system. But how we execute on this list of top momentum stocks differs. In the NASDAQ All-Star system that I share with the fallible community, there's three different ways to utilize it. There's a monthly model which has less activity. There's an active model where you trade a little bit more. And then we have an options model where you're basically executing on these momentum names with options. So let me just give you an example of the monthly model. And like I said, if you want to know about the other models and stuff, you could just sign up at that link and I'll send you that information. But with the monthly model, once a month, we're looking at this list and seeing what the top five stocks are and we rotate our money into them. So if at the beginning of the month, one of the stocks we're in falls too far down on this list, we get out of it. We sell off our shares. Then we take that money and put it into one of the top stocks again. So every month we're refreshing the portfolio so that we're staying with the movers. Now we don't turn over all five of our positions every single month because a lot of the time, the ones that have high momentum last month have high momentum momentum this month because they continue to move and they continue to earn us profits. We're only switching when something starts slowing down, when its TSI number drops too low. So that's the great thing about this system. There's no over trading, which was always a problem that I've had when I've been more discretionary. Now on top of the rotation once a month, we also have targets and stops for each position. So if a position hits its stop point, we're out of there because the most important thing is risk control, right? And then we also have targets. So if a stock goes a certain amount from where we entered, we're going to take some money off the table. And that type of portfolio management is what keeps us profitable through each cycle. So this simple strategy has done very well. Since 2008, it's up over a thousand percent, which like I said, is three times what the NASDAQ did. And there's a nice visual representation here. This blue line is the NASDAQ All-Stars Monthly. The red line is the Qs. You can see how much it's outperformed. Here's another way to look at it is the yearly return comparison each year. And you can see some years the NASDAQ All-Stars really outperformed 
performs and some years it doesn't. Like for example, last year, 2018, the All-Stars only made 2%, but that's still better than the NASDAQ, which lost 1%. And considering all the volatility we had in 2018 and how many fund managers blew out, I'd say that's pretty good. And that's only the monthly model too. If you look at the All-Stars active model, it made 12% in 2018. So that's the thing. There's different ways to use this system and that all just depends on your personality. And different versions of the system will perform differently in different environments. But it's cool though, because regardless of which version you use, either the All-Stars active or the monthly, you end up with around the same returns over the long run. And the nice thing about having multiple systems like this is that you can combine them. And when you combine different types of systems, you get a smoother equity curve, which is why when we look at the All-Stars combined model, if I was to use both of them together, you'd actually have a better return percentage than either one of them individually. But again, that all comes down to preference and what you want to do. The differences aren't that big, but you know, it's up to the person. And really my favorite part about this system is the risk control. So look at 2008 right here. The Qs were down over 30% and the Qs are the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ All-Stars though only dropped a little over 7%. And that's why we have those stop losses in place. It's built into the system. And cutting off those large drops in the market, that's why you can get an equity curve like this. That's three times what the NASDAQ does. And honestly, I don't even know if I like this comparison that much because we're comparing a trading system to buying and holding the queues. Now I've talked about this in a lot of videos, but how many people do you think are able to buy an index and hold through something like 2008? Very few people. It's not easy to be a passive investor and to watch drawdowns like that. I mean, sure, being a passive investor is really easy when the market is going up, but not when it turns. With the all-stars though, you're getting that risk control. You're getting out when things get bad and you're in when things are good. It's a lot more easier to use actually than something like buy and hold because it's just better for yourself. Psychology. But as you can see, the returns on this thing are pretty great. But what I love about it is that it takes so little time to use the system. Because like I said before, when I was trying to find growth stocks, I was spending hours and hours each day. But with this monthly all-stars model that I use, I spend a max like 10 minutes a month just to execute the trades because the rest of all this stuff is just automated. I don't have to do all the research anymore. All the research was done beforehand to build a system. All the back testing and all that stuff that you need to do is already done. So that lower amount of work is really helpful for me because you know I can't actually spend all day trading I got a few businesses to run too I need to make my trading as efficient as possible but I want it to be effective as well which this system does provide those good returns so really I feel like I'm getting my cake and eating it too and the other thing the system really helped me with was systematize what I'm doing because a lot of the problems I had when I was more discretionary and trying to find these growth stocks it was in the trade management so okay I could find a good growth stock that wasn't the hardest part I took a lot of time but it was doable the main problem I had was managing the trade once I was in it. Like, when do I take profits? Where should I put my stops? What should my position sizing be? And because it was discretionary, I didn't have a good way to test it. You know, I would try a few things and just see what happened. But just trying things and seeing what happens is why I would constantly get knocked out of positions. So, you know, I was pretty good at finding growth stocks. But here's what would normally happen after I find it. I would find it and then I would size too small and go into it. And once I was in it, it would take off, but I had such a small position that it didn't matter. Or the opposite it would happen where I would get into it but size too big and then at the first sign of volatility or the thing turning around a little bit I had to get out because I was losing too much and the worst part was when I was in a stock but it was going a little sideways and I didn't know whether to get out or not because I couldn't tell if the run was over I know stocks base for a little bit and then they'll go higher but I don't know the time frame I you know it's tough to tell for each individual stock so a lot of times I would just get out I would get bored you know another problem I had was over trading I just wanted to hit trade after trade but like I always quote Jesse Livermore, the most profits comes from sitting in one position. And I had a tough time doing that, which is why this system, like once I systematized everything, all those problems pretty much were solved because there was no discretion involved. There was no analysis. I didn't have to figure out whether the thing was done running or not. I just had to listen to my system. So the only job I had after I had the system was to just execute on that system. Now, I mean, I'm not saying that that's super easy because your psychology still gets in the way. You still feel these emotions and that's why on this channel I'm always talking about controlling your psychology and emotions so much 
but focusing on just your psychology and executing your system that you know that's profitable, that's the easier road in my opinion, and it's way more effective. And just trading in general became easier because I had more confidence in my system. See, the problem when I was discretionary is that I couldn't back test what I was doing, so I didn't have as much confidence in it. But with the NASDAQ All-Stars, I had all that data. That's the beauty of it. See, like check out these trade statistics. I know there's been 218 trades. Average trade length is 88 days. Average win is 20%. Average loss is 10 and a half. I got largest win, largest loss. I got all the stats I need to be confident in the system so that I could execute it. So yeah, the system worked out really well for me and a lot of our members in the fallible community really like it too. You know, they love the idea of getting the trade alerts and the text messages so they don't even have to look at the market if they don't want to. They like the private coaching and all that that we offer with the service. So if you're interested in learning more about the NASDAQ All-Star system, you know, I just went into the monthly system here. There's still the active and the options. So if you want more information about all that and what the fallible community community members are getting, then make sure you just go to that link below and throw in your email. I will send that information to you. And hopefully in this video, I gave you a better idea of how momentum trading works and how specifically the NASDAQ All-Stars works. If you have questions, just throw them down below and I'll answer them. And definitely click that link and enter your email address if you want to learn more about this. I'll talk to you again soon.